With a lack of coworkers, an inability to discuss work with loved ones, and a job that requires talking to people all day about their own experiences, it's no mystery why therapists report feeling lonely. But since loneliness increases your risk of depression, heart disease, and stroke, it's important to reduce it. I'm Heather from the Therapy Note Success Team, and these are my friends Rachel and Xavier. Together, we're going to give you five ways to fight loneliness in private practice. Number one, find a peer support network. Having other therapists you can talk to about your work is a great way to ward off isolation. Some peer support groups are small and informal, whereas others are big and structured. Whichever one you join or create, it can benefit you professionally and emotionally. According to Samara Stone on Perfect Practice, peer supervision can be used not only as a way to think through your cases, but as a way of processing your thoughts and feelings about your work. Number two, work outside the office. Sometimes just being around other people, even if you're not talking to them, can prevent loneliness. One way to do this is by working at a coffee shop when you're not with patients. The ambient environment of coffee shops will not only inspire work, but also let you see and hear other people and interact with your barista. Just make sure your screen is shielded from potential onlookers to protect client information, and the whole experience can make you feel less alone. Number three, go to networking events. Networking doesn't have to only be about business. According to Nicole Aloya on Psych Central, we often think that we need to connect with other therapists so that they can provide us with referrals. But it's most important to connect with like-minded professionals and business owners who have similar values to you. That like-mindedness can make you feel more connected regardless of if it becomes a lead or not. Number four, join professional bodies. You'll meet many people by joining professional bodies or advocacy groups, such as the American Psychological Association, American Counseling Association, and National Alliance on Mental Illness. According to therapist and author Rebecca Kirkbride, organizations like these let practitioners engage with other professionals through conferences, journals, workshops, and more, helping them feel connected and supported in their work. You may also find divisions with these organizations catered specifically to your specialization, as well as local groups for your state or even city. Other benefits you receive by joining organizations like these include online discussion groups, discounts on insurance, legal resources, newsletters, and discounted or free online courses. Number five, take classes. Enrolling in classes online or on campus is a great idea for many reasons. For one, these classes can teach you useful information for your career and potentially earn you continuing education credits. Also, you can meet people interested in the same topics as you. This can forge new friendships and professional relationships, giving you more people you can reach out to when you're feeling lonely. Even online courses or short-term classes that require traveling can introduce you to people that you can stay in touch with through email, social media, or over the phone. We'll cover more topics in future videos, so be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're tired of spending all of your time on your back office work like notes and billing, and want more time to spend with your clients, try Therapy Notes. Learn why over 60,000 mental health professionals choose Therapy Notes to streamline their practice. Enter the promo code YouTube when signing up for a free trial at therapynotes.com to get the first two months for free with no commitment. Thanks for watching.